Hey basketball coaches and players and maybe some organization leaders, uh, there is a new set of rules that have been released for the COVID-19 pandemic that we're currently under. Uh, so these are the guidance uh, basically for opening up high school athletic and athletics and activities uh, from the NFHS, which is the high school uh, rule books, essentially for most, if not all sports. Uh, so let's go through it and see what they say. So number one, they say obviously that, that not all school boards are going to be opening up athletics right away, but they do give some fantastic guidelines. So the first guideline that they, uh, that they do mention is Number one, everyone has to stay as clean and as separated as possible. They kind of go through three phases, just like the government is going through three phases. And way at the end of the rule book, uh, they did mention um, that they want the basketballs cleaned as, uh, as often as possible. And I did go over that in a previous video as well. So go check that out. If I remember, I will link that down below. Uh, come back. And so going from there, uh, Phase one, what they're looking at is uh, keeping uh, student athletes at least six feet away from each other. Um, going from there, they want to only have 10 people or 10 players that practice at a time. So if you are a school that has 12 to 15 players, uh, you'll probably have to go through uh, uh, three sets of practices, maybe five, five and five, or maybe two sets of practices with your starting five going through the full thing and then your next 10 players being split up five and five. That way your starting players get a little bit more playing time, but it's up to you how you want to run it. Uh, they don't say that's what you have to do uh, in the rule book. That's just kind of maybe one of my suggestions that I would go over and maybe do. So one of the big major things and rules that have changed, something that hasn't been in the rule book before and you weren't allowed to play with one of these on before, and that is a face mask. Um, so what they're allowing is uh, medical or non-medical grade face masks to be worn during games. You can wear them during practice as well. Um, there is an issue with sweat and all of that. So keep that in mind. You're going to need to probably, I would suggest, uh, myself, if I was uh, a coach uh, at an American school, because I doubt that Canadian schools are going to be opening back up, um, that basically probably you wear a cloth one so that you can wash it at the end of practice or at the end of game so it doesn't get gross and ugly. Those paper ones, they're just going to get disgusting. Um, but the rules do state that you're not going to be allowed to wear a face shield because those can cause injuries, which is an obvious thing it's a big hard thing over your face um, it's not like hockey and they're not in any they're they're not made like a hockey mask so uh, no face ma uh, face shields but you're allowed to have a mask over your mouth uh, which is fantastic uh, that's a really great thing to do they also have in the rules that every single team before practice and before games will need to take a players and coaches uh, they don't say coaches they say players but I'm gonna say coach as well um, temperature before the game and before practice and I would suggest that as well uh, even afterwards because they're like even myself as a player I played through the flu I know kids don't do that these days but I played through the flu and I remember one game where I played through the flu and I got like 30 I think it was like 34 or 35 points in a game it's one of those things where back then it was socially acceptable but today not acceptable if you're sick stay home. If you are an administrator or if your coach is also the admin for your team or your, for your school's uh, sports, uh, I would probably invest in one of those uh, temperature scanning gun things. I think they're like in the 70 or $80 range. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more hygienic than uh, having somebody say, okay, stick this in your mouth for two minutes and see what happens, wipe it off and stick it in the next player's mouth. That doesn't really work all that well, especially if you're got one player who might be sick and now you're like oh yeah let's wipe this off and stick it in your mouth no uh, probably a better idea to get one of those guns so like I was mentioning in phase one and two uh, there's going to be only a 10 player limit in practices it kind of confuses me with there's games going on and there's generally 20 to 30 players on a court plus coaches and referees uh, during games but in practices you're only allowed 10 that kind of confuses me uh, but that's fine. Um, rules are made to confuse you sometimes. Um, but 
if you're in training, weightlifting, that kind of a thing, they say a five to 10 player limit uh, in personal training sessions with six feet in between players. They also state further down in the rule book that in phase one and two, that they don't want in practice players to share the basketball. Um, again, confuses me when it comes to game time, you're gonna be sharing a ball anyways, and how are you gonna practice plays? So, um, with an invisible basketball, hey, catch. <laughs> um, oh no, I missed the ball. <laughs> Uh, my mind anyways so that's just going to be for the health of the team at that point that's why they're doing it um, if you're keeping let's say one player has a virus and then you've kept it to five players at least you still have a team to play with right that's why they're doing it I, I, I would assume I should mention that uh, I will be posting the link to this PDF uh, right in the description below and if I remember in the top comment below as well uh, just so that you can take a look at it because it is a hell of a long document. When it gets to phase two inside of a gym they're still looking at a 10 player limit um, for practices however if you have a court outside so um, if you were here way back when I was down in Grand Turk and I was teaching the players basketball at their school, they only had an outdoor court. You can have, if you have a school like that where you have an outdoor court that's really good or even partially good, has at least mesh, you can actually uh, have up to 50 uh, players practicing uh, on the outdoor court. So uh, that's, this is again, just guidelines, but generally speaking you you want to be safe so I would still if you're worried uh, if you're in an area like New York where you've got a ton of cases even outdoor courts I would still stick to like five players just so that in case one player did have the virus you can still go to a game and still participate in a game with 10 players so keep that in mind uh, that's what I would do but if you're in an area where your state may or your area may only have maybe a hundred cases and they've all recovered then at that point you can I would say go for the 50 outside um, that would be safe in my mind anyways that's I'm not a medical per, uh, personnel I'm, I'm a trainer uh, what do I know so one of the reasons why my hands are so cracked up and dry um, they, they're always generally like this and I always fight this dryness um, I use a lot of hand sanitizer even before this virus and I've washed my hands a ton even before this virus all started happening um, But there they say just like all the other medical personnel 20 seconds for washing your hands have your players wash your ha their hands as much as possible I wash my hands for like like anywhere from 40 to 60 seconds like I'm washing them for a while. It's probably why they're so dry all the time, but um better safe than sorry I guess maybe I'm just a germaphobe or a minor ger germaphobe but whatever it is yeah let's go through uh, phase three now so for phase three you can have a gathering of up to 50 players uh, in a practice uh, indoors or outdoors uh, so that's going to be the the nice thing with phase three if your area is in phase three uh, pre uh, workout or uh, contest screening is going to be the same there's a squirrel fighting birds over there think it won but um just taking temperatures asking players if they feel well if they don't look well don't let them play uh, it's simple throughout all the phases uh, make sure the basketballs are clean uh, I did mention this earlier uh, in another video but have two buckets one bucket with soapy water uh, because alcohol and bleach will ruin the leather on the basketball if you don't care uh, go for it but um, these are not cheap and then just have the soapy cloth wash it down get another a wet, wet cloth not a soapy cloth that's why you have two buckets one bucket full of soap another bucket full of water wipe it down you're all set then get a third cloth wipe it off dry it off you don't want it all wet and now you've got a clean safe basketball there's probably some really rich school that has a uv killer thing if you've got a couple hundred grand you could probably buy one of those but um yeah those are expensive Something that is uh, really confused me even as a player because uh, my high school did this as well. We all shared water bottles. I didn't. I, w I, already, I always brought my own and I really only shared, my, uh, shared water with the others. Maybe one or two games in grade 11 and grade 12 like throughout. Like, it, it's something to me just seemed really gross even though they're just squeezing it or whatever. Um, it says here that every player has to have their own water bottle, uh, their own towels, their own chair, or area of the bench, that kind of a thing. Um, that just to me seems logical like at any point in time um, 
I never understood how players could share water bottles. Like I did once in a while, like I mentioned, but I don't know, maybe I'm just a germaphobe of some kind, but that's just me. I did learn one thing though. Uh, basketball is a moderate risk sport to uh, COVID-19. Uh, higher risk sports are wrestling, football, boys lacrosse, not girls lacrosse, but boys lacrosse, competitive cheer and dance. Those are apparently higher risk. Uh, moderate risk are basketball, volleyball, baseball, softball, soccer, water polo, blah, 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 blah. Uh, lower risk, uh, this is going to, uh, uh, no, this is going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to say that. Individual running, obviously low risk. You've got one player out in the middle of nowhere. Um, throwing events, uh, I would say that would be moderate risk because they're sharing a ball or a javelin or something. But uh, again, if they're cleaning it, I guess it could be lower risk. Weightlifting, um, alpine skiing, um, if, if, you're, if you're at a school that does alpine skiing, let me know in the comment below, because I've never heard of a school doing alpine skiing. Maybe out in BC, maybe. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. I'm gonna link this down below. Um, it's a total of 16 pages, and uh, it, it also comes with a uh, athlete and coach monitoring form, which is kind of cool. Um, does the player have a fever? No. Does the player have a cough? <clears throat> maybe. Does, it have a, does the player have a sore throat? Um, no. Shortness of breath uh, when he is dying from running so much. Um, I don't know. I'm just joking around at this point. I, I hope everyone has a great day. I hope everyone's being safe. Hope every, I hope that basketball gets returned back in uh, the winter. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Uh, I've got a bee that's flying around, and I'm going to run inside and hide.